then I got to be able to find where I recorded it and where it goes on the cloud. But, but do you have enough cloud space? So that's the question. I'm the hope so, because it is recording right now. It says it's recording. I don't know where it's going to go. So hopefully I can download it and find it and get it to where it can be accessible by others. But what's up, everybody? B Minor, Brant Minor, Pacific University. Good to see you guys. Good to be seen. Um, I'm excited. This is one of my favorite guys here that we have today joining us. Um, I heard him speak to the Pacific Boxers men's basketball team. Um, just got to know him. He's an amazing trainer, mental trainer coach, teacher, and father. The guy's got a whole five kids? We have five. They have five. There's a song, song Circa 94 by, by Looney's. I, I got five on it, meaning we got five kids. Tommy gets that one. The other guys are just being nice and shaking their head. No, well, thanks for being here, Colin. I really appreciate it. Let's go around. I'm going to say your name. And when I say your name, I want you to unmute yourself, introduce yourself, name, where you're from, and your favorite restaurant, your favorite restaurant. So let's start with uh, Kai. Hi, I'm Kai Nakamura. I'm from San Diego. And my favorite restaurant, I've, I think just fast food wise, uh, probably Raising Cane's. He went there. He went with the fast food. You could have gone anywhere. Yeah. But you said but fast food. I'll respect definitely. it. That's all right. Good answer. Good answer. Raising canes. Okay. Let's go to Blake. Blake, go ahead. Let's have you unmute, introduce yourself, and tell us your favorite restaurant. Yeah, hi, I'm Blake Tooney. Uh, I go to Mountainside High School, which is in Beaverton, Oregon. And my favorite restaurant is this place called Fogo de Chow, which is in downtown Portland. You got a lot of really good meats there. You get the meat sweats for sure coming out of there, but they walk around, they cut the meat right exactly, out. Exactly, yep. Oh, that's, that is Brazilian Steakhouse. Good, good yep. call. Good pick there, Blake. Uh, Zane, Zane G. Go ahead, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Zane Goldman. I'm also from San Diego. Um, and I'd say my favorite restaurant is either Board and Brew or In N Out. Board and Brew is like a sandwich place. In San Diego only? I think so. I think it's like maybe mostly California. Okay, Board and yeah. Brew. Hold the brew until you're 21, though, my yeah. man. Yeah, so just the board. <laughs> just the board. Just the board of the B. Uh, Lonnie, let's go. Um, my name is Lonnie Brown, and I'm from Longview. And then my favorite restaurant is Red Robin. Red Robin. Nice. The dirty. Um, Tommy, go ahead. Yo, hey, I'm Tom Magnuson, or Thomas. I got a trinity of names. I'm from uh, Tigard originally, but I'm out in Salem right now. Really excited to be here. Uh, thankfully I did look up my restaurant cause I couldn't remember the name of it. I love PF Chang's. That's good. I also go to love, love teriyaki down here in Salem. Um, and Brant uh, suggested I go to wild pear and I got a gift certificate and I got to go there soon, but, uh, love food. It's good stuff. Definitely a foodie too. Good pick. And I think Lex, I don't know if you can answer the question, but it was just your name, where you're checking in from and your favorite restaurant. If not, I can give give the deets on Lex. So that way, everybody knows who she is. So maybe she I can go. Okay, yeah, that's my cool. name Lex, is Lex. Cool. <laughs> hey, um, I'm Lex. I'm from Portland, but I go to school in McMinnville. Um, my favorite restaurant is Puerto Vida. They have really good tacos. So. You heard that right, Tom. She does go to Linfield, but we still oh. we don't hold that against her because she's not a men's basketball player. So <laughs> thank you. Okay, let's go. She is a baller. She is an the consummate teammate, does whatever the coach asks, undersized, but plays inside, does a little bit of everything. She's coached with grit. She's done a lot. So I appreciate you hopping on, Lex, and joining in. And Colin, let's go ahead. Let's have you check in, introduce yourself, tell these find folks a little bit about yourself what's up team uh, happy to be here excited to to collab on the mental game as you see i'm wearing my boxer colors for you coach you know got a, got, got a rep the, the red and black um from seattle we're in nashville now and you think about favorite restaurant anything that has pizza you really pizza. can't mess pizza you really can't mess pizza up i mean like you music. really can't it's like music so if, if you got pizza 
I'm 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 rolling. I think my, my favorite is is mod pizza. As long because as there's no can, pineapple. Whoa. I'll 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 hit the pineapple. I can do pineapple. Um, yeah, so um I'm a mental performance coach. So think about strength coaches help you get bigger, stronger, faster. Think about skills coaches, shooting, dribbling, all that type of stuff. So my role is to help you think better, help you more self-awareness, confidence, resilience, you know, process over outcome, your values, courage, fear of failure, how to manage pressure, all that stuff. So um, as you advance your career, you're going to see that skill and talent ability is pretty close, closely s similar. Um, so the biggest separator as we, as we elevate ourselves is who can process failure, who can not change who they are for, for where they are, you know, and able to take what we do in our, our, our training, you know, in, as an individual a team and then practice and then game uh, and then, and then crunch time. We treat these moments exactly the same. Um, See, so yeah, I've written seven books, two journals. I played uh, baseball and, and football at Washington State University. Um, go Cougs, Pac-12. What's up with the Pac-12, man? USC and UCLA leaving? Come on, man. Yeah, I don't get it. But but what's also interesting is I'm also the mental performance coach for the UCLA women's basketball team. I'm on year two, so I, I go to Westwood every month. I do stuff virtually, work with the coaches and the players all, all, year, all, year, all year round. Um, I've, I've trained – a number one overall pick in basketball, not to mention any names. Um, trained like Heisman Trophy finalists, um, pro athletes, college athletes. I've trained like business business executives, you know. So I do a lot of like corporate training. Trained uh, like Nike, Amazon, Zillow, Salesforce, um, a lot of these these big big companies. But uh, I love working with youth athletes, man, because that's where I kind of remember what it felt like, you know. You have so much passion, and um, you want to you want to do well. And uh, if if pro athletes get access to this content, shouldn't youth athletes or, or or amateur high school and younger players get access to these tools? So I thought I'd open with an activity. Is that cool? Love it. Like I'm I'm guessing when you show up to the gym, you probably just don't just go all out, you know, full speed, full tilt, running like suicide lines, right? Or you're in the weight room, you probably don't max out, put 45, you know, 245s and max out the bench, right? So we're going to do a mental warm up to get our, our mind warmed up. You can't just exercise, you got to exercise. So everybody get out your seat and go get a cell phone charger. Make sure that the charger has a plug at the bottom. Coach Bonner, have you seen me do this before? I have not seen this one, no. Good, 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 good. There has to be a charge at the bottom. If it's just a USB, it won't work. There has to be weight at the bottom of a string for this exercise to work, for this mental warm up, for this mind gym activity. You can't just go to the gym. You got to go to the mind gym. Okay, let me see your charger. Make sure that there we go. I, I see you, Zane. See you, Kai, Blake, good, Tom, good. Lex, I can't see you, but I'm imagining you have a, a, a charger. Yeah, I'm all good, ready to go. Legit, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna hold the charger from the bottom about 10 inches, about 10 inches with your thumb and finger, okay? Now, this is gonna be a little bit of a shoulder workout. It's gonna be a mental workout, but a shoulder workout. So what I want you to do is hold the cell phone charger through your thumb and finger at the same height as your nose. So you can see it now. Now, now, this is let's rest our shoulder now. Uh, Kai, hold it a little longer. I want ten inches, not five. Okay, good. All right. Now look at the charger. Okay. Now, not using your thumb, your finger, your hand. We're gonna use our thoughts and our brain. We're gonna look at the charger. I want you to see it move front to back. Visualize it move front to back. Even say front to back in your mind. Now I want you to say left to right. Visualize it move left to right. Visualize it move left to right. Now I want you to command it, even say in your mind, circle. Visualize it, see it move in a circle. Even say to yourself, circle, see it move in a circle. Now command it to be still with your focus and your thoughts. Command it to be still, even say still. See it, see it's in stillness, not moving at all. Now let's do a little shoulder rest. I'm a kind coach. I know your arm's burning, so we'll let you just rest it for a second. Now that we did that little warm up, now you're in control. Hey, right now you got the, the, the green light. Isn't it so fun the coach said, you know, you got the green light. 
shoot however you want, find ways to get creative. Now you got the green light, move it however you want in your mind, in your mind, in your mind, command it front to back, command it left to right, command it in a circle. Do you move it however you want in your mind. Kai, are you using your fingers or your brain to move it? Your brain? Isn't that crazy? Put it down. What do y'all think about that that activity right there? Did y'all get it to move? Mine, I, mine was moving. It was moving. I yeah. saw it. Everyone's everyone. Lex, were you able to get that thing to move? Yes, I was. That's dope. Wow. So tell me, tell me why you think that works. Because you can convince yourself of anything. You can convince yourself of anything. Yeah, I can work off of that. Okay. Who else? Is there something to be said with like, if you convince your mind to do one thing that eventually your body just starts to follow? Oh, you tell your mind something, your body follows and does it. That's okay. I, I see you, Blake. Who else? I guess I could imagine it moving, but... I knew that it wasn't moving. So it was also the other side of like, I can think about it moving, but I can't make it move with my thoughts. So I knew it was still at rest, but I could imagine it moving. I, and I imagined it moving front to back and left to right in a circle and yeah. So Tom, yours didn't move? Well, it did move a little bit because my arm was getting tired. But so, but I, but you couldn't you couldn't command it and move it because I saw everyone else. That thing was moving how you wanted it to move. So maybe what that was is there may be some kind of clutter up there that's ooh. kind of uh, stopping that clarity for your conscious and your subconscious to act out what you focus on. I don't know. Who knows? All that is an experiment. That maybe some practice. All that is showing you with a, an activity. One of my favorite truths. Y'all get ready to take some notes. In the mind gym, we don't just think it, we, we ink it, okay? The pen is undefeated. All right. So this is a mental workout. When you go to the gym and you just, you know, chill and do nothing around getting better, we got to do the work. So in the mind gym, we, get, we process things, we listen, we engage, we, we get vulnerable, we, we write things down, we get clarity, and uh, let's go. So my favorite, one of my favorite um, acronyms is TBT. What does TBT stand for? Throwback Thursday. I hope when someone said that. that's not it. That's not it, Tom. It means thoughts truth, become truth things. Be to oh, truth be told. That's no. It's thoughts become things. I know it, it. It does. Those all mean what? Yeah, true. But like, I want to take over that hashtag and create. You know, this more popular. TBT is thoughts become things. So what that expression is, what that phrasing is, is, is this truth. Everything happens twice, first in our mind, then in real life. Brian had to think about that for a second. Everything happens twice, first in our mind, then in real life. So your performance, your game, your shot, you're on defense, that, that possession, that timeout, it begins before it begins. It begins before it begins. As in, you are either consciously or subconsciously thinking about possible outcomes in your mind, tr true or untrue. True. You're kind of going through scenarios. Now, here is the problem where we have to be more mentally fit. This is where mental fitness comes in. This is where mental fitness comes into play. Based off of research from the National Science Foundation, what percent of human thoughts are negative? 80? Man, Tom, you're on fire right now, man. It's 80%. And 95% and of human thoughts are reoccurring. So in the untrained mind, four out of five human thoughts are negative and roughly nine out of 10 are reoccurring. So your brain's default mode is to pontificate and predict and forecast worst case scenarios or to catastrophize. So you're basically telling your mind, don't screw up. Don't fail, or you're holding on to past mistakes and it's kind of on a loop. So subconsciously, you are programming and wiring things you don't want to have happen. So when I say it begins before it begins, TBT, thoughts become things, that's really a neutral statement. So to be mentally tough is we relentlessly 
observe and monitor our thoughts, the words that we use, and we intentionally program what we want, not what we don't want. Does that make sense? So self-talk is the software that your, your brain runs off of like a computer. Who thinks confidence is a good skill to have as a basketball player or in life? We can agree on that. Well, here's a question for you. Backed by research from the BBC lab in the UK, 44,000 patients. This was led by Andrew Lane. They're looking at confidence. 44,000 people is a big study. And they uncovered the number one source of confidence. Who wants to walk out of here with, with some swag? Who wants to walk out here in any environment? I, I take control of my emotions and my thoughts, not the environment. I don't let the environment dictate my mindset. My mindset dictates my environment. Let's go. We don't change who we are for where we are. They play to beat us. We play to be us. Where does confidence come from? Let me know. But throw it out there. I think for most people, probably praise. Hearing praise. Okay, it's good. That's about good. knowing knowing who you are self-awareness knowing your values being authentic that's good it's really good i bet you a lot of us couldn't answer that if i ask you who are you most of you couldn't answer with like crystal clarity who else talking about confidence if we all we all can agree that that's like a legit mental skill to have like legit but have you ever I been mean, coached have you ever I been coached on, on how to develop it i mean that's why I think of atomic habits. So like doing repetitive action. I love James Clear. And James Clear, one of my favorite quotes he says is we don't rise to the level of our goals, we fall to the level of our systems. So what systems do we need to create confidence? Okay, so here's my, here's my question. Have you ever just worked your ass off and you prepared? And most people will tell you confidence comes from preparation. And I would say that's part of it. But have you ever prepared, worked your ass off in the moment you sucked? Working harder doesn't guarantee success. It doesn't. Because you're just training the body. So there are three things we can train. Body, craft, mind. There are three things we can train. Body, craft, mind. Body is your physical speed, agility, explosion, strength, endurance. Your craft or your skills is like ball handling, shooting, like skill, like ball skills. The mind is the third thing. So you can knock out two out of three, but if your mind's not right, your game is not tight. It's not on point because you haven't worked that, that one, that one third bucket. So the research shows that self-talk is the number one driver of confident action. Colin, you say self-talk, what, what is self-talk? What is that? Self-talk is a skill that has to be trained. Just like how to, how to dribble with your offhand, just how to break a, a, a press full court as a point guard, like how you're gonna move the ball across the court, you know, past, past 10 seconds or how to finish with your offhand or how to, you know, post up. Like it's a skill that has to be trained because your default mode is to go negative. So I say by design, not by default, by design, not by default. So what I've seen I help top performers do is I help them program a self-talk and visualize game plan, what we want to really, what words we want to use, what want to, imagery we want to see, how we want to feel, dress, rehearse, greatness before it happens. That's going to influence subconsciously how we see ourselves, our moves, what we expect. Because mostly because we don't train the mental part, your brain goes fight, fight, freeze, hide. You look at threats. Ego gets in the way. I got to fit in. And Tom, if you like acronyms, help. Just come off of mute, everybody. Come off of mute. Help, help me finish these acronyms. What does what does YOLO stand for? You only live once. once. Yeah. What about what about FOMO? Fear, Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. Okay. So Dr. Michael Gervais, one of the best mental coaches in the in the world says FOPO is the biggest epidemic in performance. What does FOPO stand for? Do you, mind, do you remember this? I taught this to you guys like in, in 2019. Fear of peacing out? I don't know, fear. No, 
Fear of <laughs> other people's opinions. Remember uh, Zane? You said confidence comes from hearing validation from someone. That's where you get your confidence from. Well, that is not, should not be the number one source of letting someone else's opinion dictate how you see yourself. So what I'm going to teach you is this. What you say to yourself has 10 times the power versus what other people say to you. Your inner dialogue. So if you were to mic up any elite player, their self-talk is just different. It just is. I love Derek Jeter. Who thinks Jeter, I mean, most hits all time postseason? Won five, five rings. He's doing something. He's doing something, yeah. But, like, he is just relentless with this optimism, you know, when he's when he's competing. In baseball, You if you fail seven out of ten times, you're a ball and you're going to the Hall of Fame. So he'll face a pitcher and he'll strike out. He'll come back to the dugout. He's got nothing. I'm going to smoke the next one. I've seen his stuff. Let's go. It's just different. Who has the most medals of, of all time? In the, Michael in the, in the, in the Phelps. Olympics. My wife's Michael son. Phelps. Let's go. Well, Michael Phelps has a self-talk ritual. Every time he walks through a door, he gives himself an affirmation. Who knows what the word affirmation stands for? Affirmation means you're affirming something about yourself. And hopefully it's a it's a productive one. So Michael Phelps walks through the doorway. I'm a champion. I'm a beast. I got a dang near seven-foot wingspan. I got a ton of endorsements. I'm rich. I don't know if he says that. <laughs> but all he does is is he, he's affirming who he is, not who he's not. And your cells are listening. Watch this. The body produces over 300 billion cells per day. Your cells are eavesdropping on your thoughts. Your cells are listening. Your cells have memory. So your nervous system is, is a part of your brain. And your, and your nervous system covers every part of your body. So when we did that little drill with that, the charger, your, your brain is commanding all your cells, all your little microfibers of your muscles, to do what it thinks. And Tom, you're exactly right. He would visualize every aspect of his race for 30 minutes, even when things went wrong. I can't see through my goggles. They fogged up. Well, how would I move through this? Or my swim cap broken. How am I going to move through this? Or whatever the case may be, he would dress, rehearse greatness and go moving through adversity. Because watch this. Why, this is very critical for us to understand. The brain and the body cannot tell the difference between what is real and what is imagined. Be minor. What, what does that mean to you, what, what I just said? The brain can't tell the difference between what is real and what is imagined. That if you're going through something, visualizing it, it's just the same as preparing physically. Or just the same as doing. Doing. So I'll say this very, again, very clearly, very succinctly. This is brain science. I didn't make this up. When you're actually physically doing something, shooting, dribbling, passing, or doing a test or, or presenting in front of your peers, which is very stressful, whether you do it physically or imagine with all your senses what it would feel like, this, you know, what you would see, what you would smell, your brain is activating the same neurons. It's, it's firing the same things to your body as if it was you're actually there. It's like, hold up. Have you ever seen like a scary movie? You're like, ah! They will hold up, dog. It's a movie. It's not real. Why are you freaking out? Or you ever like woke up from a dream? You're like, OMG. Like I'm like sweating. Like it wasn't real, but dang, it felt real, huh? So when you do that, you're creating what's called neural pathways and mental growth. I gave you two studies that, that support this. Who wants to improve your free throw shooting this year? Okay. Well, research from the University of, of, of Chicago was looking at free throw shooting. They had three groups that they measured. Group one would practice making free throws every day for a month. Group two, no practice. Group three, no ball. They would close their eyes. They would visualize making free throws every day. They would just see and feel it in their mind. After 30 days, they did a baseline, they did a, a post measurement. The group that practiced every day increased their percent by 24%. Group two, no practice, no improvement. Group three, that just visualized making free throws increased their percent by 23%. The problem is most of us visualize failure and what we don't want to have happen. You play to not fail. What could go wrong here? What if I miss this shot? What if I get scored on? What if I turn over? So you are secretly commanding that charger to do what you don't want subconsciously. Focus on what you want, not what you don't want. See before it happens. Experience as if it's yours. Now, the second study was 
from the Cleveland Clinic looking at strength training, group one lifted weights every day for a, for a month. Group two would just visualize lifting weights. They didn't touch a weight. After those 30 days, the group that lifted weights increased their strength, obviously, by 30%. That's logical. The group two that didn't touch a weight but visualized and experienced it physically and mentally in their mind, they increased their strength by almost half, 13.5%. So when I say get your mental reps in, I'm saying take a moment each day and go to the mind gym. It takes three, four minutes. It doesn't take a long time. And see it how you want it. And then throughout the day, have relentless productive self-talk. So um, Blake, can you show us, show us your jumper, bro? Let's just, let's see, let's see that, see that, 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 that jumper. And imagine I'm your coach. Is that really how you shoot dogs? Hello, bro. Shoot again. Like, let's, let's see your shirt. That's really horrible. I, don't I like want to see that head. elbow fall. You're, through. you're, you're going to, you're going to probably miss that shot. Like you're going to take that shot to a game for real. <laughs> Remember I'm your coach. Um, break. Don't miss this. Don't miss this, bro. You got no game. You should probably quit. You should probably find maybe chess. Maybe I might, maybe, maybe choir, maybe the, the debate team. Like, why are you out here? Like, you have no, no reason behind. Keep shooting again. Let's, let's see that shot again. Bah, doink, brick. He's a brick house. Like, would you, would you want me as your coach? No. Would you hire me as your coach if that's how I talk to you all the time? No. Then, then, then why would you talk to yourself that way? Right? Good point. Yeah. But like you hear people talking, but you would, but that's how, that's our dialogue. That's, that's how often we, that's how we talk to ourselves usually. So if you talk to yourself, raise your hand. Yeah, I think Lex didn't raise her hand and everyone's thinking, do I talk to myself? We all talk to ourselves. What are you thinking? Do I talk? We, we all do it. So we say anywhere between 6,000 up to 70,000 thoughts per day. So if the mind is untrained, let's just use simple math. That's 50,000 thoughts. Let's hear the, hear the math quiz question. If 80% of human thoughts are negative and we have 50,000 thoughts per day on average, just a number, how many thoughts of those are negative? What, what's the number? 40,000. 40,000. Is that you, Zane? Yeah. I, I see you with that picture. Let's go in the background. Come on. Yeah, 47,500 um, are reoccurring. That's insane, bro. You pulled your calculator. So, so what you're doing, you're going into that game and your opponent is not the competition. It's yourself. Period. It's not the person against you. You know, it's very interesting. You have somebody trying to stop you to get to the goal and to score, but really you're stopping yourself most of the time. It's not, it's not the opponent. You need, you need that opponent's best to bring out your best, but oftentimes you're stopping yourself because of, past mistakes, you've been conditioned. So this bodes the question, how would you define the word mindset? Who thinks mindset is pretty important for us to be our best, to advance ourselves, to win some games, to get more minutes, to be as productive as possible? Well, how would you, just throw out some words, how would you define mindset? Uh, Self-talk. That's great, I'll take that all day. Good job, Blake, what else? Um, I would say positivity and consistency. Okay. I hear that that's, that's op most optimal, but mindset is a neutral, you know, how you define it will be neutral. It's not gonna be good or bad. It just is. Perception of self. There we go. That's, that's what I like. Good job. Perception of self. What else? Like the mental framework in which you perceive things that are happening to you or your thoughts. Yeah, the mental side of how you perceive maybe your your thought life or your thought atmosphere. I'm just throwing out these zingers to you today. So here's how we're going to define mindset. And maybe, be my you can put this in the chat, or I can. Mindset by definition is a conditioned set of beliefs that drive behavior. A conditioned set of beliefs that drive behavior. There are three key words we need to understand is conditioned. Your brain has been conditioned. Your mindset, your mental toughness, whether it's strong or weak, has been conditioned since birth by what you see, hear, or experience. That's shaping your reality of what you perceive to be true. 
And this conditioning shapes these beliefs and these beliefs flow into our behaviors. Have you ever heard somebody say, huh, you know, I just forget names. Or I'm a horrible driver. I can't follow directions. Or I have a sweet tooth. You know, or I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a morning person. You know, or our, our program, you can't, we can't recruit here or we, we can't win on the road. Like that's conditioning. It's not true. It's what your brain and what you've conditioned yourself to believe to be true about what you're consuming, your past, what you're listening to. So this is a critical thing to understand. Our beliefs and behaviors are not based off of truth, but our perception of the truth. So it's our job to take our power back and challenge some of these limiting beliefs, to notice some of these limiting beliefs that are creeping into our brain, our conscious and our subconscious, that's stopping us. Because these beliefs and behaviors form what is called your self-image and you never outperform your self-image. The most powerful force, how you see yourself, I'm gonna tell you two stories and then I'm gonna give you three things that we're gonna, I'm gonna I gotta leave in like five minutes. I'm going to tell you two stories and give you three tools, two stories, three tools, two stories, three tools. Okay. The first story I learned from my uh, mentor, rest in peace. The name is Trevor Moad. Trevor was Russell Wilson's mental performance coach, was at IMG Academy, trained, you know, worked with Nick Saban in Alabama for eight years, uh, was with Kirby Smart, but Georgia was with like NBA teams worked with Vince Carter when the Grizzlies worked with the, the Angels when the Mets and all these teams like the go he was 2017 Sports Illustrated world's best brain trainer he's one of my mentors that like helped train me and he told this story um, there's a story out of Russia in the 1970s and there is a, a Russian railway freezer car trains that would go by but and this this guy's job was to go into these freezer cars and clean them out at night that was his job well one night he got inside and he got unfortunately trapped the latch on the outside went down he couldn't get out he's trapped in there it's a freezer car and based off his training he's like i have eight hours to live they found a piece of paper jeremiah that's him and it's him. yeah and and um he wrote down, I have eight hours to live. And they found him down, I have four hours to live. I can't feel my hands and my feet. My whole body's going numb. I'm shivering. Then yeah, he said, I have an hour to live. I'm going to die in this freezer car. They found him dead the next day, gone. While doing like the studying, like what happened in there, they found that the freezer apparatus was broken. It was 54 degrees in that freezer car. The cold didn't kill him. His mind killed him. Everything happens twice. First in our mind, then in real life. The brain cannot tell the difference between what is real and what is imagined. TBT, thoughts become things. The most important conversation you have each day is with yourself. What's the number one source of confidence? Self-talk. So as much as we're going to train our game physically, you know, what we're going to do in like motion, what we're going to do with the, you know, off ball screen, pick and roll. Like we got to figure out, we need to have a self-talk game plan. We need to have that. Like write it down. Like what words we're going to use. What, what pictures we're going to imagine. Now the second one, story one, who thinks that story's made up? So it's a true story. It's insane. Okay. <laughs> no one said anything. They're like, that was kind of an intense story to tell. Yeah. So the second story I'm going to tell you was a story out of Vietnam. It's about um, a, a, a pilot in the USA. His name is Major Nesmith. He got shot down during war. He was in a prisoner of war for like six years. He was in like an eight by eight cell. Now, his strategy for survival is a little different than the Russian freezer car worker. To help him cope to get through that like horrendous conditions, he would visualize playing golf every day. That would help him escape that horrific condition and just like get through the day. He would play 18 holes in his mind. So he'd visualize going back to his, his home course. He'd see 
you know, the, the tee box and the fairway. He'd imagine what club he'd use. He'd feel the shot before he hits it. He'd do his walk and his mind, his setup, his chip, his putt. He did this every day for six years. And the thing was, he wasn't a great golfer. He's shooting in the 90s and the 100s. But that helped him get through that, that horrible time and conditions. When he got saved, it took him three months to get his body healthy to actually play a round of golf. Remember, he shot in the 900s. His first round back, after not touching a club for over six years, he shot 75. That's a 25-point improvement, not even touching a club. Why? Because the brain can't tell the difference between what's real and what's imagined. So I've seen images of LeBron James doing his post-up game without a ball, doing his moves, seeing the ball go in. I've seen images of Drew Brees Saturday nights before the game by himself on the field doing his like his top 10 plays and doing all his different checks. I've seen Clinton Kershaw do what's called a shadow bullpen, which no ball, but he's in the bullpen going through all his pitches. When you take the ball out, you get a perfect rep. What does that mean? When you take the ball away and you get the rep mentally, you get a perfect rep. Who can explain what, what, I, what, what I mean by that? Well, the result is in your mind. It's not like it actually happened. You're, you're envisioning it successfully every time. Yes. And your body can't tell the difference, nor can your brain. So just like you're, that, that study you shooting free throws, you're getting perfect reps without touching the ball. And, and there's a great book called The Body Keeps a Score. Your, your cells have memory. Your, your, your nerves have memory. Your nervous system does. So, but most of us are in this shame fear cycle. We're reliving our failures and we're, and we're pre-living what we don't want to have happen. So you're subconsciously commanding your body to screw up because you haven't conditioned your mind. I told you there are three things you can train. What are they? Body craft, your craft and your body. Yeah. So we look at those three buckets. How much time you spend in the weight room or running, getting stronger? How much time you spend shooting, getting shots up, ball handling? What are you doing for that third bucket? What, what are you doing? Can you tell me? I think the silence is the answer. Okay. I'm going to give you three things you can do. Three things right now. Is I want you to create what, what, what Trevor taught me is your internal advertising campaign. Your advertising campaign. So do, do you guys watch TV? You guys watch like commercials? Like why, why are there commercials on TV? Help me understand why are there commercials on TV? To sell a product. Heck yes, I need to sell a product. I don't want you to buy something. So my question is, are you buying what you're selling to yourself? Do you, would you buy from yourself? Would you buy your game? Would you trust yourself game online to have you get that stop on defense or make that play on offense? So we need to subconsciously, consciously, you know, tell ourselves why I'm worthy for this. Like why I trust myself, why I belong here, why I'm worthy. Research from Dr. Valerie Young at Harvard shows that 70% of people have imposter syndrome. What that means, imposter syndrome is like, I'm not qualified. Other people are better than me. I don't know if I can do this. So you're advertising why you're gonna fail, why you're not worthy. We need to flip the script and advertise why we are worthy. Why we do belong here. But it has to be rooted with truth. Because you can go to your garden and say, there are no weeds. There are no weeds. You're not weeding. So we need to affirm who we are and why we belong. So th three ways. To, I want you to create like a note card or in your notebook. Look at this every day. I want you to write down three examples when you've had success, when you've overcame hard things, things you've accomplished that you're proud of. Because the brain keeps a scoreboard of your failures, true or untrue. It doesn't keep a scoreboard of your wins. This is just to, to, to trigger your mind. I have overcame hard things. Who knows the name David Goggins? Former Navy SEAL. He used to have the pull-up record, most pull-ups in a day. He calls this his mental cookie jar. 
when I need a boost of energy, a boost to, to keep enduring, I go back to when I've overcame hard things, things I've accomplished to keep me going. The second thing is I want you to write down just for your memory is all the all your preparation, all the work you've done. Why would you practice if you don't believe it? Does that kind of make sense? Like, hold up, you did all that work for nothing? You don't believe and trust yourself? Like, you know, I've taken the shot a million times. I don't need to change who I am. I'm gonna trust the process, process over outcome, process over pressure. Process, not the prize. I prepared, make the main thing the main thing. This is what I do, let's go. The last one of this three, so we got past success when you've overcame hard things, your preparation, remind yourself you've done the work. And actually it helps if you've actually done the work. Fall back to that, that preparation. But then the third thing is what I call anchor statements. Memorize, or I call them I am statements. Memorize three things that you want to go to to remind yourself who you are. You can call these your values. Like Tom, you mentioned that for your, your identity, knowing who you are. So my anchor statements that anchor my performance is like a ship. Imagine a ship with no anchor. When there's wind, there's waves, I call this the drift. It drifts away from the present moment. Is that making sense? So if you can use words to anchor your focus, anchor your feelings, anchor what you see, anchor what you do, that's gonna quiet the noise, true or untrue. Because the mind can only focus on one thought at a time. This is called thought replacement or thought, su thought substitution. The untethered soul, Tom, what is that? Oh, it's a book about spirituality. I was just thinking about visualizing that with like an anchor, like that um, I can like visualize myself like coming and going or like thoughts coming and going. And um, yeah, just kind of threw that out there. Yeah, it's a book. That's good. I'm going to check that out. But yeah, but it's more or less you're, you're noticing and you're taking your power back. You're in control. So here's a question from Dr. Susan David. She asks, who's in charge, the thinker or the thought? What do you think? I like to say thoughts are like buses. I don't have to jump on everyone that goes by. That's it. Or you're, I'm on a negative bus. Hey, bah, pull the thing, stop. I'm getting off right here. Boom, get off a negative bus. Get on the neutral to positive bus. So if the mind is untrained, the thought wins. If the mind is trained, the thinker will win. So I tell myself I am authentic. I am present. I'm courageous. I am authentic, I'm present, I'm courageous. Or if you want less I am statements, you want more like, okay, what do I focus on the moment? Um, in 1996, USA sprinter Michael Johnson set a gold medal in the 200, won the 400. And they say, Michael Johnson, do you set goals? He's like, well, prior to my race, you know, it's like if you don't have a list going shopping, you get lost. You buy things you don't need, you get stressed out. So before I compete in the Olympics, I wrote down these things. Head down, pump my arms, explode. I'm a bullet. So I would say that to myself over and over again to quiet the noise. Head down, pump my arms, explode. I'm a bullet. Those are kind of neutral statements. But I'm a bullet is like he's embodying speed. So a few it could be, I attack, I'm relentless, I'm worthy. No. Tell yourself who you want to be, not, not what you don't want to be. And use, use these, just go throughout the day, just attack your mind with, with productive self-talk all day long. Bro, you don't think I use this when I'm playing noon ball at the YMCA? Your boy's got a J still. Don't, don't, don't trip on, on, on your boy. Your boy is just range. I'm on the gym, I'm in range. But, you know, one game, you know, I, I missed like, like my first three threes. So the old me would be like, stop shooting. This is one of those days where you're going to create for other people. No, I, when I was going to transition back in defense, I visualized I saw the ball going in. When I'm playing ball, my, 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 one of my mantras is look good, feel good, next one will be good. I hit like four in a row, I hit, hit the, Game, the game winner like last week. Let's go. Shoot or shoot. But shooters have a different dialogue. Steph Curry, 
it takes a professional to go 0 for 14. Because most shooters will stop shooting after four. Now, when we're part of a team, that's a little different. But what I'm saying is, you're going to have some games. You're going to miss shots, right? You're going to miss a shot. So if your confidence is attached to a result, that's what I call shaky confidence. Your confidence is attached to a result. You can't control outcomes, and you're going to fail sometimes. Stable confidence is not attached to an outcome, but it's attached to someone's opinion of you, what you think they think. When you're unshakable, you don't need to see an outcome. You don't care what, what, what you think people think or what people think. Like You're locked into your values, your game, your truth, your passion. That's unshakable. And it starts with your inner dialogue. The second thing we can do is going to, to the, the mind gym. And I call this the ha method. I have, I am, I will. Do this every day. So that self-talk plan is like all throughout the day on the court and practice when you need it. Just use those kind of three areas. You know, when you had past success to revisit those, we need to remind yourself your preparation. I put in the work. My anchor statements, that self-talk plan. But then this is what is called mental imagery using all your senses. So it's an acronym, Tom, you like acronyms. It's called the HA method. I have, I am, I will. So every day, morning or maybe pregame, take four minutes to yourself. And I have is focus on gratitude. Is a game of basketball a get to or a have to? It's a get to. And do an inventory of just joy and like, I'm so blessed to be here because your brain is designed to worry. Finding what is wrong is easy. Finding what you have takes some work. Then I am is our affirmations, powerful self-talk. So do that in the morning or before the game. And I will is take a moment and visualize what you want. See it, experience it. Go to the mind gym, see it, feel as if it's yours. I have am, I will. Does that make sense? So your, your, your ad campaign is all the time. The ha method is like do that once a day. Does that make sense? And the third thing you're going to do is to have a, a reset plan. Press the reset button. Brent Miner, what does it mean to press the reset button? Bring yourself back to where you're at, to where you lost focus, maybe. Yeah. Um, what we what I teach at UCLA is we call it next play speed. The team who gets to the next play the fastest over and over again is going to is going to win. Good play or times, bad. Yeah, good or bad, exactly. How many times do you make a bad play on offense in frustration? You make a stupid foul. Don't turn one mistake you, into two. Yeah, or you have a good play and you're you're still hung up. Well, what what's that going to look like on 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 TikTok from the highlights? Or you know, what if I score twenty points? What's going to happen? Like, so no, you compete to stay present, but have a reset. So have a reset word, a reset routine, a reset visual that you look at. I have an NBA official, and I coached him to read the, 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 the Raptor banners before every game just to quiet his mind. It's a, it's a reset visual. I have a tattoo that says 2437 on my, on my uh, forearm. 24 is for Kobe Bryant, father of five, no longer here. 37 is for my college teammate, Steve Gleason. He has AOS. I look at that to reset. Oh, I'm good. I'm alive. I'm, I'm, I can walk. I'm good. Let's go. Physical routine, Kobe would untie and tie his shoes and lock back in. My reset phrase, I say, I'm not defined by this. I use language to reset. Lori Hernandez, gymnast team, you would say, would put her hand in her diaphragm, take a soldier breath and say, I got this. So that's it, squad. Your ad campaign, the ha method, reset. I got to jump in like one minute. You guys get some value today? For sure. Give him a trivia question. We'll give spit some tri I got something. I got a prize for you guys being here. But Colin, what do you got any trivia? And we can have the first person either types it in the chat or if they want to unmute, first person to say it. But who yeah, what type um, of chat do you got? Or trivia? Okay, okay, okay. What could be something that we talked about? If, see if you were listening that I shared. Um Finish this sentence. Everything happens twice. First in your mind, then in real life. 
I mean, Kai said it with conviction and power. I mean, I don't know. That's, that's pretty good. I don't know. Yeah. How about this one? They played a beat us. We play two. He only said it once, so it was quick. They played a beat us. We played a be us. They played a beat us. We played a be us. Let's go. Play. So, so what that means is they can scout our offensive plan we do on defense, but they can't scout who we are. Be us. Do what we do. So, yeah, so it's, it's that phrasing. Do you change who you are for where you are, you know? Love it. I know you got family life calling, so I really – Yeah, appreciate- I, I got to jump. I got to jump. I know we could talk and I, I care about you guys. I got I, I gotta jump, but hey, my my gym time, body craft mind. You can't just do two, you gotta do the, the third. And that third bucket is the our competitive edge. Mindset is our competitive edge. That's, That's what's gonna separate you. So I gave you three things you can work on all the time. Your ad campaign, your self-talk, you know, game plan. The ha method is taking time for mindfulness to visualize imagery. I gave you two studies on shooting free throws and weight training. Like you just elevate it by thinking about it, visualizing it. And the third one is what separates people at the highest levels is they're able to respond quickly. That's the biggest separator. So good luck, squad. Do you have any questions? You, 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 you got any questions for me? We're good. Hey, best of luck, team. And one of my favorite truths is this. The body has limits, but the mind is limitless. Let's go. Peace. Let's go. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. And he's out. He's out. That was good stuff right there, y'all. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, I know I got some stuff out of it. I always pick up new stuff when I listen to Colin. Let's stop.